What's up, YouTube? It's uh, Jay Hart here. Gonna do a quick review on the Kuyu Guide Jacket and the and the Yukon series. Probably can't tell the difference. It's the same exact jacket, just made out of different material. So first off, on the Yukon series, gotta say I love this jacket. It's a it's a great jacket. You know, definitely keeps the rain out uh, for those rainy days. And here in Alaska, there's a ton of rain. So it is a great jacket. I gotta tell you, the price point though is a little steep for a rain jacket. It's Somewhere around $379, which is pretty spendy, especially if you know you're not making a, a good amount of money. By the way, $379 bucks for rain jackets, pretty expensive. In terms of the fit, Kuyu gear seems to be a little tighter. So for me, I'm 5'9, 200 pounds, uh, and basically I have to I've used an XL in anything that I get from Kuyu. If I get a large, it ends up being too tight, something that I'm not too comfortable with. So if you want to correlate that to, you know, maybe a suit, I wear a size 44 short, typically. I can fit a 42 short, but it is a little bit snug on the shoulders and the arms. It's the size, I typically wear about a 36, I could probably fit a 34. So around the belly area, uh, it's it's definitely fine. It actually feels too big, the Kuyu uh, Yukon jacket feels too big. As you can see it, I mean, there's kind of a lot of room in there. But if you're wearing some mid layers and a, and a under layer, it, it fills up pretty quickly, especially if it's in cold weather and you're wearing a, a thicker jacket, like maybe the, the Super Down that Kuyu makes, or if you got a thicker winter coat that you're wearing underneath, it, it'll fill up pretty quick and it'll be a little snug. So in terms of the pocket placement, pocket placement's fine. Uh, got two pockets here at the front. Uh, only thing I don't like though is if you actually, if you use the Kuyu Bino harness kind of impedes some of the pockets a little bit. This little pocket, I don't think I've, I've ever used this once. If I have, it might have been to put some earplugs in, but it, I'm not sure what you're supposed to put in there. I guess I should look up and see what you're supposed to use in there. In terms of the quality of the jacket, uh, I, I'm not sure I've owned a more quality jacket than this. The, the construction is incredible. Uh, the seams, definitely it's waterproof. I mean, I've been in some, some, I've been in some torrential downpours in, in Alaska and this jacket's lived up to the standards. I have done some hunting in Southeast Alaska, came out being you know, completely dry. And I think the thing that kind of speaks volumes to me is the construction of the, the cuffs. If you look at the cuffs, it's made of this rubber material. It's very obviously made, you know, good construction. Definitely one of the best jackets I own. And, and I would expect so for the price, $379. I've seen some complaints about the neck size. Me personally, I don't have any issue with the neck. It doesn't give me anything, any issues. When I do zip it up completely on cold, cold days though, I mean, it probably rubs my chin a little bit, but that's something pretty easily to deal with. And just so you understand the fit right now, I actually just have a sweater on underneath. So that'll give you an indication of, of how it fits and I'll put a couple of photos up so you, you can see how it fits exactly. From my perspective, the biggest issue with this jacket is the noise. So as you can tell, it's a pretty loud jacket and most people expect that with a raincoat. And I do expect it to to some extent, but this jacket seems to be louder than other jackets I have, even in rainproof material. So that is one one issue with it. The way I use this jacket, so when I go caribou hunting, I end up having to go through some pretty thick brush, and it's typically early in the morning, and there's a lot of dew, and when I haven't used rainproof material, I end up being soaked the entire day, I end up being super cold. So how does this coat do in the weather? It does incredibly well in the rain. Does great in the rain. Does great in the wind. It definitely blocks the wind. If you're in colder weather, you definitely have to have an underlayer. You know, it, it's it's not something you can just wear. This is the only jacket you wear in the cold weather. I mean, if it's below 30 degrees, you gotta have an underlayment on this with this jacket, which isn't a big deal. I mean, I think people are typically gonna be, gonna be wearing sweaters or, or other jackets, other jackets underneath if it gets that cold. So not too big of a deal. Uh, the reason I started out with the Kuyu Guy jacket, I actually started out with the pants first. 
is because I do a lot of hiking when I do my hunting. So I end up going through a lot of bushes. Uh, most of my hunting is caribou hunting, which you, you don't have to worry about the noise as much, uh, especially if you're hiking in a significant period of time. So the way I typically hunt for caribou, I hike two to three miles away from the road. Uh, it's a controlled use area, so there's no four wheelers or anything like that. And you don't typically have to worry about it because once you get to you know where the caribou are, there's not as much shrubs. You don't have to worry about it hitting your your, your your pants and stuff. But moose hunting is where I actually worry about it more because some of the places that I hunt, it's uh, it's private native corporation land, and there is shrubs that end up hitting you because it's not maintained, it's not used a whole lot, and it scares the moose away. So I started out with the guide pants in hopes that that would be more quiet than the Yukon pants that I had, and. The first time I used them moose hunting, it, it was incredibly quiet. So I decided to buy the jacket as well. So that is the reason I bought this is basically it, it's super quiet. And I mean, as I'm moving around, you can't hear anything compared to the, the Yukon jacket where you could hear all of it. Although it is uh, much better for hiking around and for being quiet, obviously it's not gonna be as good in the rain. So. Not something you have to worry about unless it's going to be a pretty harsh day with a lot of downpour, but something to consider. So one of the great things about the Guide DCS jacket is it's only $197, so it's $200 cheaper than the Yukon jacket. And you get the same pattern, it's the same exact coat, it's got the same exact pockets. The only difference is, is that it's made out of a different material. So in terms of how this does in the weather, as I said, it, it's not waterproof. You know, when I go caribou hunting, I end up walking through a bunch of shrubs that are bench, that, that have dew and they're wet from previous days of rain and from the dew. And I couldn't use this jacket to walk up through the shrubs because it would be soaked by the time I got up to where the caribou are. So that's exactly why I use the guy jacket for stuff like that. But this is better for moose hunting and walking around where you're not gonna be going through shrubs as much, but you are gonna be hitting them and you need to be extra quiet because you need to get in on the moose. So that's my main purpose for the, for this jacket is, is moose hunting. The other thing that's good about this is, although it's 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 a good jacket, you know, it's, it's warm for the material that it is. It's not something that you're gonna just completely overheat in, like, you know, having a garbage bag like the Yukon on. I mean, basically you're just gonna start sweating, sweating your butt off. So in terms of fit, same issue with this one, had to buy an XL in, in the Guy DCS jacket. Uh, otherwise it fits, fits good. This one I do feel like it's not as bad on the arms. It doesn't feel like it's as, you know, as baggy and have as much material that's gonna be hitting, hitting shrubs and, and brushes around. So the one downfall of this jacket is it's not incredibly warm in the wind. You know, I expected this to be better in the wind, but if it does get windy at all, it, it definitely goes right through the jacket. And this actually isn't something I noticed until I read another review about the jacket and somebody talked about it going through the wind. I actually used this jacket to go on a, a quick walk in probably, you know, 28 degree weather. Here in Anchorage, you know, nothing crazy, but I was freezing the entire time even though I, I had the jacket and a sweater on just like I do right now. So, uh, definitely doesn't do very good in the wind. So if I had to choose between the Yukon and the guide jacket, I'd probably choose the guide jacket because it's $200 cheaper. It gives me what I need, which is some camouflage, uh, a little bit of warmth. It is quiet in the woods, so I'm not gonna have to worry about scaring the moose away. It's comfortable, still has the same pockets. One pro and one con about the, the guide jacket. Pro, it's $200 cheaper than the Yukon. It's a great jacket still. And con uh, definitely doesn't do as good in the wind or the rain, so something you have to be considerate of when you're, you're going hunting. One pro and con about the Yukon jackets. Pro does incredibly well in the rain and the wind. It uh, help keeps, helps keep you warm, uh, even though it's only one little layer. It, it's like I said, kind of like a garbage bag, keeping all the heat in. So that, that is the good thing. It does really well in the weather, the inclement weather. Con, it, it's close to 400 bucks, which is a little outrageous for 
a raincoat and a coat that uh, you're likely going to be, you know, causing some damage to when you're hiking out and shooting a big game in the woods. That's it. Hope you enjoyed the review. Appreciate your time.